because nobody, when I was a teenager, mentioned the word mindfulness. And do you know why that was? Because we were mindful half of every day because we didn't have a choice. We didn't have a cable service in our pocket. Yeah. You waited for somebody, you waited. Mindfulness. Yeah. You were on the bus, you're on the bus, watching condensation drip. Mindfulness. I didn't realize I was like a guru before I got a cell phone. You want to return a VHS? You got to rewind that mindfulness. Have you ever rewound anything in your life? You are the post-rewind generation. And I'm not judging you. I'm just saying that there were times where we were forced to be with ourselves. You know, I used to take just I can't remember the last time I just took a shit. It was definitely over a decade ago. Oh, I look like Nixon. Hello there, thrill seekers. How you doing? That clip is a little bit of a mystery to me. It was sent to me by a guy named Gene Zolis. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I don't know him, but he follows me on Instagram and he sends me funny clips sometimes. And I really liked that one. I think that one is really useful and it's a good launching board to talk about stuff that I talk about on this channel, but I don't know who that comedian is. The original post comes from a, an account called Gerard For Real, and I checked Gerard For Real, and that doesn't seem to be the comedian's account. I think that's uh, somebody who reposted it, and if anybody knows who that comedian is, uh, let me know, and I'll look at some more of his stuff, because I think uh, that bit is funny, and maybe the rest of his stuff is funny. Sorry, I'm looking at Ziggy. He's kind of scratching himself. So, the clip is about mindfulness, and I think it's a really, it's a really good example of one form of mindfulness that I think is getting lost uh, for people these days. You know, and I, I don't like to be one of these old people going, you know, kids these days, rah, 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 rah. but it's kind of true. You know, there was a time before we had all these little distraction devices with us in our pockets. There's mine all the time. I resisted getting one of these for years. Uh, I was very late in the game of getting one of these uh, smartphones and I finally b buckled under pressure. I think it's just because my flip phone wouldn't do anything anymore. And now I got this stupid thing and I carry it around with me and I do the same things that, that people do. Uh, I, I really try to avoid it and I think it's it's good to be kind of mindful of when you're doing that. So if you're you know, standing in line at the grocery store or if you're walking your dog. I see people walking their dogs and looking at their damn phones or with their stupid headphones on like trying to shut out the world. Uh, try not to do that. You know, it's something, it's something I, I know the temptation of it because I feel the temptation of it just like anybody else. I don't have some Zen superpowers that, that makes me, you know, completely immune to wanting to go and, and uh, I don't know, look at some dumb thing while I'm hanging around just doing nothing but it's really really useful to just learn to stay with those moments of life that are boring or that seem like there's nothing going on that seem like there's nothing important going on oh Ziggy what are you choking on I think he's okay <laughs> he just coughed up something anyway uh yeah, it, it's really important, I think, to to do those things, and it's part of it was part of my original Zen training, if you will, that I did, to, you know, kind of to myself, was just noticing those moments because I realized kind of early on in my practice that one of the things I was doing with my life, at least mentally, was dividing my life up into important things, you know, like uh, going to a concert or going on a date or, or uh, I don't know, having some wonderful experience or having some painful experience, you know, getting yelled at by my boss or my dad or something, you know, whatever. These, these things that are like, you know, medatsu is the word that comes to mind and I, I was I, I was kind of default because of living in Japan for 11 years I have these words that are Japanese in my mind and medatsu is a great little word that means something that stands out uh, and it is a combination of two characters of mei 
which is uh, I, and Datsu, which is to, to pop out, you know, to, to come out of something. Hi, this is Editor Brad here, and I just realized that I was wrong when I said that the Datsu part of, of Meidatsu means to stand. Not, I was thinking of it uh, the, as another character, but it's to stand. So, uh, so I think of the life, and I was thinking of life in terms of these Meidatsu moments, and I realized that and, and you just have to think about this for a second to, to figure it out, that most of your life is not those moments. Like most of my life was not these standout meidatsu, if we want to use the Japanese word, moments. You know, it was, it was boring moments where nothing was going on. And because I was so focused on these important moments and thinking about the ones that happened in the past and thinking about the ones that might happen in the future and kind of waiting in anticipation for the big moment, I'm going to go see Teenage Fan Club on Saturday. So I could be sitting here going, oh, Teenage Fan Club is one of my favorite bands. And I'd be like, oh, teen I'm going to see Teenage Fan Club on Saturday. I'm going to see Teenage Fan Club on Saturday. I'm going to see Teenage Fan Club on Saturday. You know, and think about this Meidatsu moment that's, that's coming up. And then I go and I see the concert, but because I have so much of a habit built up about thinking of the meidatsu of the important moment in the future or the important moment of the past, that I end up missing the concert. This is how I, I was for a, a, a good portion of my life without even realizing it. Uh, a lot of people use drugs to try to make this not happen, you know. I, I know a lot of people who wouldn't go to shows unless they were high. And I think one of the reasons is, is that the drug can kind of... Um, silence, maybe not silence, but it can kind of dampen down that anticipation of the future and memory of the past thing, and so you can actually be clearly in this moment. But you can also learn to do that without any drugs at all, by just staying with the moments, those moments of your life that are boring, like the waiting in line uh, at, a, at a grocery store or standing around... I don't know, at a bus stop, you know, uh, in Japan, I was at a lot of train stations waiting for trains to show up, you know, so I had a lot of time to be mindful there because this was in the days before well, some people had smartphones then, but uh, I didn't have one until much later. So, you know, I, I would just stand around and exist and notice these moments and notice that this is reality. This is the this is real life. This is the real life. Da 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 da. That's how it goes. I don't I don't know if that's how it goes, but anyway, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I just spit on the the uh, laptop here. But I was. If I stayed in those moments, I would feel something. Like right now, I'm feeling the wind on my skin, and I'm hearing the beeping of the anti-gopher thingies we put in the lawn, and you know all the the experience of just being right here and right now. Now, having said that, I thought, well, if I'm going to make a video about this, I should look up what Dogen has to say about mindfulness. And gosh, it's a doozy. <laughs> so I found one quote I want to share with you about Dogen's view of mindfulness in that appears in Shobo Genzo. But to set you up for that, I want to show you what word he is referring to. And this is the word, and it's pronounced nen in Japanese. And this is the word that's most often translated as mindfulness. I think it is a translation into Chinese and then into Japanese subsequently of a smirti, I think is how you say it in Sanskrit, but let's concentrate on the Chinese character because I think the Chinese character is interesting. And I've talked about this before, so you old timers may have seen me do this, but I'm going to do it again. The top, the, a lot of Chinese characters are made by taking two other Chinese characters and smashing them together, and, and sometimes three or four. But in this case, we've got two. So the top Chinese character by itself would mean now, ima. It would be pronounced in Japanese, now. And the bottom one would be pronounced kokuro, or sometimes shin in Japanese, and that means heart or mind. So it means keeping your mind on now. Hi, it's Editor Brad again. And I realized while I was editing this that I forgot a stroke in this, in the, in the Chinese character that I wrote. There's a little, there's the hat part uh, up here. 
and then there's a little line under the hat and I didn't have the line under the hat in the version that I showed you earlier so there this is the correct version of the Chinese character Den mindfulness and that's what Dogen is talking about when he uses when we see a translation of the word mindfulness in a writing of Dogen and so the piece I want to read you is from a, it's from book three, if you're looking at the Nishijima Cross edition. And the title is Sanju, Shibon, Sanju Shichibon Bodai Bumpo, 37 Elements of Bodhi. And Bodhi is usually translated as enlightenment. So if you have another edition, it's probably got a title somewhat similar to that uh, in, in other translations. And he's talking about the various roots, the five root forces. And in the footnote, it says Gokon, that's how it's pronounced in uh, Japanese, from the Sanskrit pan, Panchendriyani. Okay, I think that's how you say it. In Sanskrit, they are, oh God, I'm not even going to try to read the, the Sanskrit words, but let's see. They are belief, diligence, mindfulness, and balance and wisdom sorry balance and wisdom so those are the those are the five roots and i'm not sure exactly what the metaphor root is supposed to mean but uh, you know root forces something that's very basic to us and here is what he says about mindfulness as a root so i'm going to read it to you and then we'll see where we get with it mindfulness as a root is a withered tree as a mass of red flesh Oh boy, <laughs> that sounds dogany. So the footnote gives us a withered tree suggests a person sitting in the state of detachment. A temple's zazen hall was sometimes called the withered tree hall. So in sitting in the state of detachment is a way of saying zazen. A mass or group sometimes expresses not only aggregation, uh, this is a group of withered trees, but also integration. For example, in the compound danketsu, which means unity or solidarity. So yeah, that's real poetic, so let's just let's just keep going. We'll call we call a mass of red flesh. A mass of red flesh is uh, a body, human body. A withered tree and a withered tree is mindfulness as a root. We ourselves who are groping for the mark are mindfulness. So we are mindfulness. Groping for the mark is trying to get, you know, enlightenment or or realization or whatever it is. There is mindfulness that exists in moments of owning one's body. And Nishijima Roshi's footnote gives this, uh, says, Owning one's body or being in the body means having consciousness of one's real physical presence. And there is mindfulness that exists in moments of having no mind. And Nishijima Roshi's footnote says, Having no mind means being free of self-consciousness. There is conscious mindfulness, and he says conscious mindfulness uh, means mindfulness in which there is a mind, literally, and suggests, for example, consciousness of oneself in zazen. And there is mindfulness in which there is no body. And his uh, footnote is that, it uh, says, literally, mindfulness in which there is no body. Okay, that's the same thing. Suggests the balanced state of seemingly effortless action. And Dogen goes on, the very life root of all the people on earth is mindfulness as a root. So mindfulness is our basic existence. There can be many people in one state of mindfulness and many states of mindfulness in one person. So remember in, in Buddhism, we don't regard a person uh, the way a lot of people regard a person. We tend to regard a person as a single fixed entity who was born one day and will die another day and has a, has a life of his or her own, etc., etc. And the Buddhists tend to regard a person as a kind of temporary state of things in the universe. So that's what you are. That's what I am. At the same time, there are people who have mindfulness and there are people who do not have mindfulness. So he's kind of bringing it back down to the more concrete. 
So the first sentence might uh, be if you went with uh, Nishijima's four phases, which are, I always remember them with the acronym SOAR, which somebody, I think probably Mike Lutchford probably made that up. But it's subjective, objective, action, and reality. So the first one may be subjective. There can be many people in one state of mindfulness and many states of mindfulness in one person might be the uh, subjective form. And then the objective form is at the same time, there are people who have mindfulness and there are people who do not have mindfulness. So that's kind of like the concrete reality. Sometimes you're you're mindful and sometimes you're not you know in the in the state in the same sense as that comedian that unknown comedian it was saying in the clip I showed you uh, 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 at the beginning sorry uh, people do not always have mindfulness and mindfulness is not necessarily con con connected with people sorry I'm, I'm thinking ahead of myself so I'm not sure if that really goes into the action phase but that's how it is yeah yeah let's let's go with that that's how it is you know it's just that's the way it goes sometimes in real action even so through s the skillful maintenance of this mindfulness as a root the virtue of perfect perfect realization exists so that's reality usually reality is this kind of sub uh, kind of poetic statement but in this case it's more of a concrete statement it's just even though there is a sort of ideal where everything is mindfulness and you are mindfulness and I am a manifestation of mindfulness. I am a living red flesh, if we use his metaphor, Dogen's metaphor, uh, manifestation of mindfulness. Here I am. Here is mindfulness. And that's, that's a beautiful image. But in, in reality, you kind of got to do something about it. And... You know, I, I talked at the beginning of this video about what I did about it and what I continue to do about it. It's just kind of be here now, if we want to uh, quote Ram Das, you know, which was a, that was a very interesting book. And I read it when I was 18 years old and enjoyed it. I haven't read it since, but um, it's a great sentiment, be here now. You know, so that's, that's what mindfulness means. So there you go, a little, a little bit of everyday mindfulness for you and a little bit of Dogen to help confuse you about what I just said. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed it. See my Jesus Christ Superstar shirt? Isn't that cool? So anyway, I'm going to leave it at that for today and go back to trying to write this book that I'm trying to write. So if you want to donate to me continuing to write books at home, you can go to the links that you are seeing below. If you go below to the description on YouTube, that's direct links. Or if you don't like that, you can go to the URL that you're seeing on the screen right now, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. And you will find my links to my paypal and patreon accounts there and that's how i make my living and i really appreciate your support but as always you don't gotta support me if you don't want to support me okay we will see you next time have a good time all the time and remember to be mindful while doing it oh you're being very mindful right now you're mindful of that sound of that train he does not like trains ziggy are you mindful are you mindful of me sometimes <laughs> do you like mindfulness Alright, let's go and be mindful of, I don't know, editing the video inside. Oh, that was a second. Alright, let's go.